What's the easiest way to adjust a reverse spin and loop? Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Johnson, and today's tip is on a reverse spin and loop. So this may be a situation where you have to extract a second primary molar, and you do have an erupting six-year molar posterior, but it's not in enough to band it. So you're not going to do a distal shoe in this case. You may end up wanting to do a reverse spin and loop off the primary first molar. And sometimes when these come back, usually they're about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half too long. So you're going to have to adjust the band and loop. And one of the problems you're going to have is if you take the band and you go ahead and adjust that with your three prong and you bend it to out on all sides, on all three sides, you're going to bend the band. So my tip today is to go ahead and find the best fitting stainless steel crown out of your box and go ahead and place that inside the band and loop. Now, what this is going to do is going to make it so when you go to adjust this band and loop that you're not going to have to have any worries with bending it. So you'll take your three prong and there's on a three prong, it's an orthodontic plier. So you'll take it and you want to put the end that has the one side on the inside. That's going to make the band shorter on all three sides. So you can go ahead then and go ahead and adjust your loop and you're not going to bend the band as long as you have that crown in there. And you can do that on all three sides and go ahead and that will shorten this crown and loop up. So that way you can get a little more space. If all else fails and you cannot get that shorter, what you want to do is go ahead and cut one of the solder joints off and cut it also up at the end, smooth that down and make it into a one armed bandit. And then you'll be able to cement it. So that's today's tip. Find it very useful at my office in that situation. And you'll have a lot of less frustration about bending a band. Thank you.